Now this changes dramatically when you're in an atomic superposition state. So now let's consider our state initially to be in a superposition state of 1 and 2. For example, we could have created that by a pi over 2 pulse acting onto the system. And then we turn off the light field and let the system evolve. And we know how it's going to evolve because it's just going to evolve at the atomic resonance frequencies. So the state 2 is going to evolve at e to the minus i omega 2 1 t as a function of time. So now let's calculate d of t, the expectation value of our dipole operator. So d of t is just going to be now the expectation value over this time evolved state that we want to know. And now we just have to plug in this state psi of t and calculate the expectation value. So now since you're in a superposition state you just have to multiply out for this psi of t state the resulting terms and what you basically obtain are four terms in this equation. Now we know that the first two, this one and this one, have to vanish. That's just what we calculated on the last slide. When you're in an eigenstate the expectation value of the dipole operator vanishes and when you have two states with different parity, one and two, then this can be non-zero. So this matrix element can be non-zero indeed and that's just call this here, this is what we called D12 and we assume this matrix element to be real so this is the same uh, as here, this is also D12. So now we just regroup everything, collect all the different terms, multiply D12 out and make use again of Euler formula that tells us that this difference here is just going to be, together with this i, is just going to be sinus omega 2 1 t. So we see actually when the atom is in a superposition state we get an oscillating dipole moment. The magnitude of the oscillating dipole moment is given by the dipole matrix element and the oscillation frequency of this oscillating dipole is given by the natural resonance frequency of our atom omega 2 1. So this is the, the dipole moment amplitude And it's given by the matrix element of our states 1 and 2 over the dipole operator and this is the natural resonance frequency of our atom. How can we understand this if we look at the electron cloud density? What is the electron cloud density doing inside of our atom for being in such a superposition state? So again I've written down now the superposition state psi r of t now in spatial representation. So we're in state 1 and in state 2 in a coherent superposition state but I'm now writing down explicitly the wave functions of this state 1, this atomic orbital 1 and the wave function of being in this atomic orbital state 2 and then we have the natural time evolution at the resonance frequency of the atom given by omega 2 1. Now if I calculate the electron density my rho of r comma t for such a superposition state again I just have to take norm r t squared because but because now I'm in a superposition state I have to multiply by psi by psi star that's equal to psi star psi and now if you do that you actually see you get kind of three different terms you get time independent distributions electron distribution of state 1 electron cloud distribution of state 2 plus an interference term and this is kind of important so when you kind of sum amplitudes and square them you always get this interference term and this is the whole point about wave mechanics when you sum amplitudes and square them you get interference terms and this interference term is going to change sign at the frequency of the resonance of our atom omega 2 1 so it's going to be positive and negative, positive and negative as time evolves and going to add and subtract from this time independent electron density distributions that we have here. So we see now we are going to expect a dynamical evolution of our system, a dynamical evolution of our electron cloud. So let's take a look at a few specific examples of our system. So let's take a look at where we have the system initially for example in the 1s state, the hydrogen atom, and we're exciting it to a superposition state, a 2s state, 
which is a slightly bigger kind of spherically symmetric electron cloud. And then there's difference energy between the 2s state and the 1s state. Now, if we would have created such a state, what is going to happen over time to my electron density? So this is what I've animated here for you. So let's take a look at that. So you see that this electron cloud density basically shrinks and grows, shrinks and grows, corresponding to the constructive and destructive interference between this bigger cloud and the smaller cloud uh, wave function that we have in the system. Now let's take a look at the second case where we create a superposition state between, let's say, a 1s state and a 2p state with ml equal to zero. So that would correspond, for example, to the following situation. Imagine we have the following level structure. We have the 1s state here. Then we have a 2p state here with magnetic quantum numbers minus 1, 0, and plus 1. And now I'm creating a superposition state of the atom being here and here. And this is kind of this frequency h bar omega 2, 1 that I have in this system. So now you see that the wave function of being the 1s state, that's again this spherically symmetric electron cloud distribution. If you're in the 2p state with ml equal to zero, it's this pz orbital where you have positive and negative phases of the wave function here in this electron cloud distribution. So now if you add these wave functions, you see there's going to be constructive interference between this wave function and the top part of the wave function of the p state and destructive interference between the s state and the lower part of the p state wave function. So this means the electron cloud distribution is going to be shifted upwards compared to the center of gravity where the nuclear sits of our system. Now as time progresses, this phase evolution is going to flip the sign of the pz orbital. So when this omega 2 1 times t equals to pi, this is going to become positive and this is going to become negative. So now we have constructive interference at the bottom of the system, but destructive interference at the top of the system. Okay, so now what does this look like if we animate this? So let's do this. We animate this. And we see that the electron cloud distribution indeed oscillates kind of up and down, up and down as we would expect. And again, it does it kind of in a fashion that we would have excited with laser light if we would have applied linearly polarized pi light driving the electron cloud up and down. So that again corresponds to our classical intuition of what's happening. Finally, let's look at the case where I'm taking a 2p state with ml equal to 1. So now again we have these three states that we can have in the system. For example, 1s, 2p. This is uh, L equals 0, L equals minus 1, and L equals plus 1. And let's say now we create a superposition state of 1s and 2p with ml equal 1. So this would be now the superposition state we're creating. We have the 1s wave function given by the angular part y0,0. And we have the 2p wave function given by the angular part by the spherical harmonic y11. L equal 1, ml equal plus 1. Now I've encoded the phase of this wave function in colors for you. For the A1s state it's constant, let's say positive, and you see that you have the same phase when this color is red here, so we're going to have constructive interference of this y11 wave function with the 1s electron cloud and destructive interference on the opposite side where this is just changed sign. So we expect the electron cloud to be shifted a little bit over to the side, but as now time goes on, let's have a look what happens to this electron cloud density due to this circular dynamics in the system, you see how the electron cloud now kind of moves in this circular fashion. So because of this circular phase imprinting that we have here on the wave function, when we evolve that in time, we're just moving this red part in a circular fashion around the rim here. So this part where we have constructive interference and destructive interference just rotates as a function of time and we have this kind of resulting electron cloud density which is positive uh, here constructive interference in this region and then destructive in interference in the other region where we have lower electron density. And this also actually is very intuitive, this circular electron motion that we get, because the transition we've created here, we would have had to excite that by a sigma plus polarized light field. 
So if you remember from your atomic physics course, this is a delta ML equal plus one transition that you can only excite with circularly polarized light. So when the light field has this circularly rotating polarization vector, for it, which our classical intuition would tell us that the electron has to move on a circular trajectory, indeed we find that if we excite the electron in such a way to such a state that the resulting electron cloud now obeys this circular dynamics as well. All right, so finally for you to think about a little bit, I've shown you three cases, 1s2s superposition, 1s2p with ml equals zero, and 1s2p with ml plus one. Which of those actually has an oscillating dipole moment attached to it? So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention for today and see you next time.